Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into Chicanic. I hope everybody's having a great week. I am now that I have finally figured out what was wrong with this backpack blower. I have got to admit, I don't get stumped that often, but this one got me. I had to set it down, back away from it for a couple weeks, and come at it with a fresh pair of eyes because I was at a loss. I had no idea why it wouldn't run, and uh, I'm gonna show you how simple it was to fix and what is wrong with it, and hopefully it'll save you some time, money, and frustration in the future. Okay, so a little backstory on this backpack blower. A customer brought it in, I guess it was about a month ago, and they said that it wouldn't run. Like most of the things that I see come in the shop, it had a tank full of water. It was a simple fix. I poured it out, primed it out of the carburetor, got fresh fuel in it, and it started and ran like a brand new blower. Wasn't an issue. They took it home a couple weeks later they show back up to the shop and they say that it's doing the same thing well it wasn't really doing the same thing it would start and pop off like it wanted to run but and it would sort of do like a out the muff out the muffler and then it would never hit again it, and so i thought well maybe the exhaust is clogged because these are the worst unit to have a clogged um spark arrestor screen in the muffler so I do have a video on how to fix that. I'm gonna put a link above in case you need to uh, figure out where it is and how to fix that. But went to go check the spark arrestor and it wasn't even in there. Whoever had worked on it before previously, they just took it out and didn't put it back. So obviously at one point that was an issue. So I checked everything else. I checked the fuel. It had the uh, fuel in there that I think I even put in there. He hadn't even used it that much. Um, it had the fuel filter was fine. The fuel lines were fine. I, I thought, well, maybe it's backfiring a little bit. Maybe I should check the flywheel key. Maybe it sheared a little bit, which would have been odd, but went ahead and checked it and it was fine. Uh, checked the setting of the coil. It was fine. I have had on these particular units, the BR350s, the, the coil is mounted in a really sort of janky spot on, on the aluminum you know, housing that comes out. And so I have had coils just break off. And uh, thankfully this one hadn't done that. Next, I went into the carburetor. Everything looked perfect inside of the carburetor. Um, the piston and cylinder looked beautiful. It had compression. I was really sort of at a loss to a point where I just set it down and I didn't come back to it for two weeks because I just needed to, I mean, I had <laughs> taken everything apart and everything was fine and I knew that I am just missing something. And sometimes you just need to do that. You need to step away and come back with a fresh pair of eyes next time and see if you can figure it out. Well, that's what I did. A couple weeks later, I picked it back up and I started right at the beginning again. And I tore it apart, started checking what I normally do. I start with compression. It had great compression. I go to gas, the gas is fine. Next thing I do is I check the exhaust. And that's where I found the problem. And I'm going to show you because hopefully if you have this problem, you watch this video and it'll save you time, money, and frustration in the future. For this project, I will be using my impact with a T27 torque so I can remove all the screws. Um, I also have my handy dandy wear a set with my T20 on it because I am going into the exhaust and the two screws to take out um, are a T20. I'm going to be using some compressed air. You're probably not going to need it, but it's just going to make it a little faster for me. So let's start. Before we get started, I sure would like to hear from you also about all of your concerns for your fall equipment, your blowers and chainsaws. If you have anything you need help with, put a comment below and hopefully I can save you some time, money and frustration in the future. All right, so before we tear into it, I'm gonna show you what it's been doing. Um, this is a cold start, so I'm gonna prime it, choke it, pull it, see what it does. take it off choke it dies and the throttle is still on now we can give it a little throttle or try to not give it any throttle give it full throttle
once you take it off full throttle, it dies. So let's figure it out. Now for this demonstration, I am using a BR350 backpack blower. Now this could happen in anything. This can happen in your trimmers, blowers, hedge trimmers. Um, I'm in the South and this, this happens quite frequently, in, you know, in Arkansas, um, so South North America, but we're going to start by taking off the three bolts with our T27 that holds the rewind on. Next, we have three more bolts, one, two, and a third one down here we're going to remove to take off the back housing. This one it, down at the bottom here, you can see it's, it's right here on this side. I'll move this over a little bit, right here on this side. Now we can remove our back cover. You're going to want to pick up, there's this, this rubber buffer right here. You're going to want, just want to pick up like that and it'll pop off that buffer. So, like I said before, I checked the spark arrestor and found out that it was gone. So I really assumed that that was not my problem. Then, this second time that I went into it, I found the culprit. So let's show you here. And this can happen in one day. Your blower or trimmer or hedge trimmer can be working one day and all of a sudden, the next day not work at all and this could be your issue so in the last video i did about spark arresters i told people that they cannot just take them out and i want to uh clear that one up i'm never going to tell you how to um get rid of safety switches or safety spark arresters or anything like that in my videos you do whatever you want to do. I can get fined like $3,500 from the Environmental Protection Agency if I tell you to do things like that. So I'm not gonna do it. All right, so after we take this off the second time, because the first time I took it off and I'm like, well, there's nothing there. There's nothing to clog up. The uh, screen is gone. But this time I actually looked down inside of it and let's see if we can zoom you in here and let you see what's in there. I'm trying to get the best angle here so you can, I can get the camera and the light to shine down that hole, but it is completely clogged up with dirt dauber. And now I think I'm too close. I think I got to back away a little bit so you can see the light it up there. It is a complete mud compacted mess in there. No wonder it would only pop off and never start. Let's get that out of there. All right, so you are not going to need to um, take your muffler off if you don't want to. I am going to go ahead and do that so I can blow it out thoroughly and make sure that there's nothing stuck up inside there because that is crazy. I mean, <laughs> I was really because it ran so perfect and you know you just assume that everything you checked before was fine and and it it's crazy that a dirt dauber can completely mess up the whole system in one day so with my t27 i'm going to remove the three bolts to take the muffler off holes look fine. The dirt dauber didn't get up there. A lot of times you will see dirt daubers in, in uh, the muffler uh, screw ports and then you'll see them like 
on a, I, a lot of times on top of chainsaws where the, the screws to hold the top cover on. I'll see them there, but I don't know if you can see that good. I want you to be able to, but yeah, one, you're going to see how much mud comes out of here. So let's start digging. While we have the muffler off, I did want to show you inside of the cylinder at the piston. Um, it looks bad inside, but that is actually just varnish um, from it sitting and having old gas and running on some on re really old gas. But there's actually no scoring, no up and down lines. Um, it's just varnish that you you know you can see varnish lines on it. But actually, it looks pretty good inside. Um, the inside of the exhaust port is pretty clean too, so everything looks good inside. All right, so we're just gonna start digging at it. It poked out pretty easy, it seems. And it really was just a light layer. Let's see. Oh, there's something rattling around in it. Oh, no, that's chunks. Yeah, we need to get all that out. Let's see. Can we get it out this way? There's a lot in there. You can hear it shaking around, but I'm going to get my, uh, my air here in a second. Yeah, I can see it's clear now. And... All right, there's no rattling. I think we have successfully blown out all of the dirt dauber mud. So let's put it back on and see what it does. Always go real easy whenever you're messing with screws into the uh, the block. That is one thing you do not want to strip out. So if you're using an impact, make sure you're using it on the low setting or um, use a hand tool because you don't want to strip out your muffler bolts. So we're just going to get them seated first and then we're just going to pop them. There we go. Now we're going to put our back cover back on. Uh, get your buffer over that little cone shaped thing. Make sure that you're in all your areas here. We're lined up. I'm gonna put our screws back in. Now remember, I see this a lot whenever customers work on their own equipment. Now there is a difference in the screws that you are taking out and putting back in. Anything that goes in plastic is gonna be this real coarse, uh, this real coarse thread right here. And anything that goes back into metal is going to be this real fine thread. And I will see these uh, crossed and put in the wrong holes all the time and that will destroy your blower. So make sure to pay attention to where the screws are coming out of. So these coarse screws we're putting back into the plastic housing, the three that go around here. Now we can put our rewind back on and it does go into metal. So it does have the fine threads. And like before on all of these screws, just be real careful if you're using, you know, a battery powered drill because you don't want to strip nothing off. All right, now let's see what it's gonna do. All right, so. I should have listened to my own advice. Sometimes the simplest explanation is the solution and I completely missed it on this one. So let's uh, start it up and see how it runs now. I got it on low throttle. We're going to prime it a couple times, put it on choke. It popped off, let's take it off choke. Better. 
So thanks so much for hanging out with us today at Chicanic. Hopefully this video saved you time, money, and frustration in the future. If you haven't found us at Facebook yet, find us at facebook.com slash Thanks and have a great day.